In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of Live Code's new feature of previewing Xamarin Forms pages. Live Code is a .NET plugin for Xamarin Studio. You can find it on GitHub at Preclarum slash Live Code. Installing it's easy. You have to add an add-in that you make sure you update from time to time. And then for every project you want to use Live Code on, uh, reference a NuGet and add this one bit of injection code. I have a project where I've already started this. It's a Xamarin Forms project for iOS. And here it is running over here. It's just saying, hello, live code. And that's coming from a main page, XAML. Now, live code does not actually work with XAML right now, but it does work with uh, code behind, or if you write your UIs fully in code. We can use the normal tool of visualize class while our cursor is in this content page. And we can see our content page becomes live. You can also see that this font is a little bit too big, so let's back that down, and we get an immediate response. Now let's try changing some other things, and I have to apologize. I'm not very good at Xamarin Forms. Bear with me, and hopefully we'll find something. Let's try blue. Great, so now we have <laughs> a blue label. I don't know why uh, it doesn't take up the whole view, but I'm sure if you know Xamarin Forms, it's a lot easier. Now we're able to co render these content pages, but we can also render more complex pages like the master detail page. I'm going to switch over to this example by hitting Control Shift C, which is again just the visualize class command. And we see that this little master detail page is actually functioning over here. We have a list that's not very well formatted, but it's there. And we can bounce between this detail page and that list. This is all defined here in this code. So as we change something, we can see the screen updated. So I just renamed the master page. Now let's go through here and fix some things. This is a sample I copied from Xamarin. And it's just a list of colors, and we can change colors. So let's fill out the app and make it look actually nice. So there, rename that screen at least. Now let's go through here and make sure that these guys get better names. Now they are just showing these uh, named color objects. And I think that we can just override to string to return something else to show that object. Yep. There, we get an object called foo. Great. So even though I'm tracking the uh, master detail page here, I mean my custom one, I can still change other classes and see that page updated. So let's not actually call them foo. We're actually passing a name here. So let's remember it. And then instead of returning foo, Let's return the name. Great, so now we actually have the named colors. Now when I click on one, I'm just displaying this word true here. I don't even know why I'm doing that. That's this named color page. It's a dependency of the master detail page, but again, if we change anything here, it'll get updated. Unless it doesn't. Every so often, things go awry, and you have to send the visualize class command again. Sorry, working on it, getting better. So now that foo is here, let's see if we have a live version of it again. Yep, okay, so we can edit it again. Let's back the font down. Now the one thing I don't even know in this code is how do we actually transmit the selected item. Oh, that goes into the binding context. Okay. So I don't really know when we get a binding context. So let's just see what's there. I'm just going to do a fun little cheat, and that is to just use console write line to help us out if we switch to our application log. So every time I run that view controller, 
I should see the binding contact. But I'm not. So let's keep going. Ah, oh, we don't have a binding context. So there's something I can override. Ah, perfect. Good. So let's. <laughs> Even more right lines. Ah, good. So this bindy is actually getting called. And then we can see if we're actually getting an object. Ah, there. Now we're getting the object. So you see here that I'm actually able to edit classes and learn about behavior while the app keeps running. And console write line becomes really useful because it gets executed every time the code changes and I can track down bugs without having to evoke breakpoints or anything like that. Either way, that's not very interesting, but what we can do is hopefully get to that label. Let's actually save a reference to that label. Good. It'll be called the label, and then we'll bump that up to be a field also. And now, from here, we can simply print the object that we have. There. So now it displays aqua. That's pretty good. But let's do a bit better. I want to actually show the color. And that's using this little custom class here. So we just have to do a little bit of casting. Now we should be able to pull out, well, just the name for sure. We need to do a bit more editing. create a public field on there so that we can actually show it. Ah, good. So now we're printing the color value that we should be showing, but instead of printing it, let's actually show it. Excellent. And we can put the name there instead. Good. So now if I go to colors and choose lime, we get lime colors and choose purple, we get purple and blue. So I hope you enjoyed that. I wanted to show you that I can actually do a lot of GUI work and in fact even some logic work uh, all while the app keeps running and everything's getting refreshed as quickly as I can type it, minus a few bugs here and there. And I also demonstrated that console right line becomes even more useful in this world, so I'm pretty happy with that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much.